people often talk about the largest nuclear weapons and the most powerful detonations. But what about the smallest? Introducing the W-54 Tactical Warhead. This is an implosion-type nuclear bomb that you could almost hide under your coat. The actual bomb was 10.8 inches wide, 15.7 inches long, and weighed around 50 pounds. The yield of the bomb is a little bit fuzzy and is described as being anywhere between 10 to 1,000 tons of TNT. One version is described as 250 tons, with documents also placing it at around 20 tons. I looked around quite a bit and wasn't able to find solid answers to this. Who would have guessed information relating to a small nuclear weapon would still be classified? The warhead had two primary uses, in the AIM-26 Falcon air-to-air -air missile and the Davy Crockett recoilless gun. The Falcon was intended to be used as a sure-kill weapon against Soviet bombers. This was at a time when missile accuracy wasn't good enough for high-probability kills. The best way to ensure a high-probability kill with a less-than-reliable missile is to make it nuclear. The Falcon, also apparently known as the GAR-11, it seems to be the same missile, but I'm not 100% sure on that. I'm digging through military documents, so cut me some slack. Use the same W-54 warhead as the Davy Crockett, which is described as having a yield of 250 tons of TNT. Interesting. As a side, another nuclear-tip missile was developed, the AIR-2 Genie. However, it used a physically larger W-25 warhead, which gave it a yield of 1.7 kilotons. Although physically larger than the W-54, I do want to point out that 1.7 kilotons packed in something that I can toss in the trunk of a small car is kind of scary. Anyways, back to the W-54. The US Army wanted a nuclear bomb that could be shot from a jeep or a tripod, as we all do from time to time. This gave rise to the M28, or M29, Davy Crockett weapon system. A tiny nuclear bomb that utilized a W-54 warhead that could be launched off a recoilless gun mounted on a car or set up on a tripod. Soldiers affectionately referred to it as the nuclear watermelon. Two people would load it, aim it, and fire it, hoping it goes far enough not to cause them trouble. The Davy Crockett had an official yield of... 20 tons of TNT. Interesting. And a range of just over 2 kilometers, or 1.25 miles, with the larger gun doubling that out to 4 kilometers, or 2.5 miles. The bomb, and its allegedly 20 tons of TNT yield, had a 100% instant casualty radius of 160 meters, or 520 feet. Not so much from the explosion, but mostly from the neutron burst it gave off, as all nuclear bombs do. Further away, it would cripple and poison troops, damage vehicles, and generally be a bit of a mess. Interesting enough, a Davy Crockett codenamed Little Fella 2 was the last atmospheric nuclear test in the Nevada test site. There was talks of deploying Davy Crockett's in western Germany and around the Air Force's moon base. These ideas were turned down as it would raise the stakes of nuclear war in Europe and the Air Force did not have a moon base. I should hope. This isn't the end of the story. No, the W-54 had another job to do. In 1960, the US military, in their infinite wisdom, looked at the W-54 and asked the question we were all thinking. Can you put it in a backpack? And so, development of the Special Atomic Demolition Munition, or SADM, was started. The SADM was 12 inches wide, 18 inches long, and weighed 58 pounds. Similar to your average student's backpack who's not allowed to use digital textbooks for some reason. The yield of the bomb is somewhere between 10 and 1,000 tons of TNT. Once again, I am unable to find precise yields, and I fear if I dig any deeper, I'll get a curious government contact again. Maybe they can boost at a small bomb so the yield is variable, I don't know. Anyway, the SADM was envisioned to be used on targets like bridges, dams, airfields, railroads, and other vital infrastructure. The bomb would be set, armed, and the soldiers would run away before it went off. How well that worked out is anyone's guess. A remote system did exist, so I guess they could get away from it, arm it, and continue running with a head start. If it was the 20 tons of TNT, then no problem, but if it was the 1 kiloton, eh, that raises problems. The W-54 was later retired and replaced with the W-72, which, surprise surprise, is a little difficult to find information on. I'm not sure of its dimensions, but it was made to fit in the AGM-62 Walleye, and apparently had a yield of 0.6 kilotons. Or 100 kilotons. Hmm. 
This video is dragging on now, so here's a picture of a W80 nuclear warhead that can also fit in the trunk of a small car, and has a variable yield of 5 to 150 kilotons. Little Boy was only 15 kilotons, for comparison.